Today we have a new lift kit for the Pajero. It's Dobinson's. As you can see, this front one is a three inch. And I'm hoping that will stay at a three inch, but I do have my steel ball bar. I have like a lot of weight at the front of my car still, so that could sag it down. And then something to keep an eye on is coil seats. You might want to check yours and you might need to buy new ones before you install it. Um, as you can see, these ones are pre-assembled, so they've already got got it sitting in there so I didn't have to buy front ones only for the rear but yeah my rear ones have been destroyed for a very long time I've just been a little bit lazy and probably a bit naughty for not replacing them so you can buy these I got these off eBay and um, actually I got the whole lift kit off eBay um, I'll tag the shop down below I think it will drive me something like that but um yeah I have an eBay subscription so I was able to get a pretty good discount and I bought all three um, items separately and I saved $100 on each item so it worked out quite well. And then, these are the real ones which look pretty cool and the most exciting part of it all, I got free stickers so I'll be able to add heaps of stickers to my uh, table here. But yes. I've got those. I won't get the springs out because you don't really need to see the springs. But then, yeah, we've got this, which is nice and heavy. And yeah, as you can see, it's adjustable, and so it can be a two or a three. So we're gonna start by popping that bonnet because we need to remove the air box and the bracket. Then disconnect the battery and pull it out, as well as the battery tray that it sits on, as we need to undo some nuts to remove the old shocks and place the new ones in. Do this before jacking up the car to make it that little bit easier on yourself, and make sure that you have some good support underneath your car before you start working on it. After removing the wheel, place another jack underneath the lower control arm to help support the weight. Sorry my arm blocks the view a few times, it can be a bit hard to film and work at the same time, but I'm just removing these three bolts on the upper control arm. It's also handy if you have a rattle gun to undo it, because it makes it a little bit quicker and easier for yourself, because they can be a little bit tight after a couple of years. Then you have to remove this thing. I don't actually know what it's called or what it is, but I just know that you have to remove it. It's just connected to the upper control arm. Somebody can let me know down in the comments what it's called. But yeah, just undo that and fold it out of the way so that we're able to remove that upper control arm fully. And this was only on the front left-hand side of my car. It wasn't on the front right-hand side of the car. So depending on what side you start on first, I'm on the front left. I recommend having a can of WD-40 on standby just to help loosen everything because it's a little bit tight. But here I'm just removing the top bolts of the upper control arms where the bushes sit and it's both both sides are a 19mm socket. It's a little bit fiddly getting um, the socket in behind there but it doesn't take too long. Just take your time and yeah WD-40 is your best friend. As you can see here, I use a bit of an extender pole to put over the breaker bar just to help and make it that little bit easier at undoing all the bolts. And then we start undoing the bolt at the bottom of the shock and that was also a 19mm too. That's pretty much the most common socket that we'll use in the entire lift kit install. And then we go where the battery was sitting, where we removed it and there's just three bolts there that we have to undo. And yeah, this is where the rattle gun comes in handy again. I hadn't unclipped the brake line yet and I was trying to get the suspension out while sort of leaving the upper control arm in place which made it a little bit wriggly to get out so what I'd recommend doing is unclipping the brake line so you can fully remove that upper control arm. This is just the first time that I've ever installed a lift kit and removed one so you know now I know on the other side to fully remove the brake line and the upper control arm just to make it that little bit easier on yourself. And then we can finally see how absolutely shot that uh, bushing is. I knew it was really bad, so this is one of the reasons as to why I'm getting a new lift kit. Here I'm just unclipping that brake line from the other control arm so that I can fully remove it and make it that little bit easier putting the new shock in. Now we put in the new shocks and appreciate how good and clean it looks because it will never be this clean ever again. And once the top part of the shock is in, just screw some of the nuts in that were near where the battery sat. And now we start doing everything we've just done, but back to front so that we can put everything back together. 
my god, that looks so sexy. We start by putting the upper control arm back into place and then that jack that we lowered before you'll probably have to jack it up again so that you can line up where the hole is on the bottom of the shocks. And then we put on those three bolts that we did on the very first step and then I used a torque wrench to set them to 60. That's what I just found on an online Pajero forum, but I could be wrong. The bolts are a lot longer than the standard. Now onto the front right side of the car. Don't mind how dirty it is, but you can see I'm doing the same steps as I did before, placing a jack under it to give it support, and I'm undoing everything. At least this time I got better filming angles where I'm not blocking it as much. But on this one, I removed slash unclipped the brake lines, and I just moved it to the other side and strapped it up. I'm gonna plug my brake on, but... Oh, that comes in handy. The bull bar comes in handy. A little bit more of a girl's best friend. Oh yeah, this bush is stuffed too. Yeah, I can see it like hanging on by a thread. At least I know that that's the bushes that were fucked when I could hear all the banging and stuff. And here I'm just using a temp peg to try to hit that bolt out with the mallet, just hitting it gently, not too hard. 
just need a little bit of help to get out and then pull that shock out. That, that slipped out a lot, lot easier than, than what I thought. The last one I had to pull a little bit. And then I'm just tucking some bolts where the air box was sitting just to make sure that the shock doesn't slip out of place while I'm tightening everything up. Oh, I got them pretty close. Then put your tyres back on and Bob's your uncle. You've now installed a lift kit on your new car and drop it back down and just appreciate all the hard work you've just done. I didn't find installing the front of my car 10 times easier than what I did the rear. It was still super easy like overall to do both, but definitely installing the front two was a lot quicker than the rear two. It's a suspension. And then now we can start putting everything back together again. So I'm just pointing out the screw that I had to undo to take the tray out. But yeah, just clip your battery back in and put your airbags back in and turn your power on and just make sure everything's working nice and solid again. Hopefully it is, because you haven't really done anything in the engine bay, you've just taken the battery and airbox out. Yeah.
I forgot to measure the fronts to see what they were before, but for the backs, they're at 5.30 before installing this new lift kit. So there is currently a two inch lift in it, but I have a lot of weight in it with my drawers, my dual battery, like there's just a lot of extra weight. So it's actually sagged back down to just a standard. So now I've got a bit more heavy duty springs going in. So you'll finally see that it's able to actually get that two inch lift. And I'm just gonna say now before I get some comments saying it's dangerous how I've got my car standing up. That bit of wood towards the rear of my car, that's not actually supporting any other weight. As you can see here, there's two blocks, or not blocks, but stands that are actually taking the weight. That other one was there just more for safety things, so don't worry, that wasn't the only point of contact that I had. And it's very important to make sure that you do have a jack supporting this because it will like the spring will decompress and it can sort of like fly out a little bit so make sure you have the jack to support as you're undoing everything so yeah nothing pops out and attacks you and these are all a 19 millimeter socket that you'll need to undo most of the things on this side And just having a mallet handy is good to try to pop these bolts out or you get the flathead or I was using the uh, tent peg on the other side just to help push it through. Then I'm loosening this one at the top of the shock, which I probably didn't need to put WD-40 on it because it was quite loose. It didn't really take much arm strength to get it undone. You can't really see here very well, but what I'm doing is I'm just very slowly lowering the jack back down. Excuse me, sir. It was a tiny little bit stiff trying to rip it out, so you might need like a crowbar or something just to sort of pop it out a little bit. And then I also found out here another step that I should have done before I did all this. I actually have airbags in my springs, so it was still connected up, so I wasn't able to fully take it out. So just sort of popped it back in and was able to cut all the zip ties holding the airbags in place. And I didn't end up putting these airbags back in because since buying the car, the airbags have never worked. There's a leak somewhere and I don't know where. So I just ended up putting the new lift in without putting the airbags in. And you can probably see as to why they don't work because my springs are so rusty and dirty it's probably got like a little nick in it somewhere over the years. After removing everything I ended up giving it a pretty good wipe down and what I'm doing here is I'm painting on like a rust protectant just because there's a few little spot rust bits here and there I probably didn't really need it too much but you know while I'm here and I've got the wheel off I thought I'd do it. And then here is the coil seat that I was talking about that was in shocking condition. So you can see it's got a lot of holes in it and it was pretty much non-existent at that point. And this is what they're supposed to look like. They're usually nice and solid and got no holes or gaps in them. So I definitely recommend checking this out and buying them separately from the lift kit because the lift kit doesn't come with them. I only ended up buying them for my rear springs and only for the bottom set because the top set ended up still being in pretty good condition. And then with the shocks, there's just a tiny little bit of assembly needed. And when I say assembly, it's literally just two zip ties that you put on just to make sure this rubber covers where the shock is and you know no dirt and dust gets in. So make sure that you pull the zip ties nice and tight and that it's not twisted or anything like that. And then when putting the springs in, just make sure the coil seats are sitting in the right position. For me, I left the top ones in the same position they were with my other springs, but these springs had a different like rotation on them, so you will have to change that a little bit, and then you want to jack it back up. 
And then we're going to put the shock in. So I did this the opposite way around from the front. So I actually put the bottom in first and put the bolt in so it's nice and secure. And then ended up sort of using a crowbar to compress the shock down and push it into where it needs to sit. And then we slowly start jacking it up so that we're able to put the nut and the bushings on the top of that shock. And once everything's in place, you're gonna wanna jack it back up. And this was probably the most frustrating bit of the whole install. Like this was the only bit that took a bit of time and took a couple of attempts to get right. So it doesn't exactly sit back 100% how it was when you take it out because of the way that the springs and the shock compress down on it. So I sort of, probably not the greatest idea. I don't know if there's an easier way to do it, but I sort of like would hit it with a mallet a little bit to push it to the left because the spring sort of just pushes it out slightly right so it doesn't line up 100%. But once it lines up, you're able to put that bolt in and easy as it. And this is my real life tire that I've been saying in the last few of my videos is in pretty shocking condition. It's got a few deep big scratches and gouges on it but I will be replacing these and by the time this video is posted I'll have new tires. I'll be going with 285 7017s in the Falcon Wild Peaks and then moved around to the other side and here I'm just removing those airbags before I you know, undo everything like I did on the other side. And then I've got a wire brush just cleaning some of the dirt and dust off. I do clean my car after every trip, but there still seems to be dirt that still seems to you know, stay, doesn't want to wash away. And here you can really see how bad those rear springs were. So you can see why, although I had a two inch lift, they were sad, they're so old and in terrible condition. So this is why I'm putting the rear lift in.
Surprisingly, these bushes aren't anywhere near as worn as what the front is. They are getting a few little cracks. Better get no comments about me not being able to clean my car properly. And then here again, I'm just putting some of that rust protectant on just for those few little spots of rust that I have going. And it makes the car look so much better now. And at least I know it's a little bit protected because I wouldn't be able to paint this with the wheel on normally. So it's good to do this while you've already got everything disassembled. And you can see this coil seat was in far worse condition than what the other side was. It is just insane how bad that was.
and once I ended up getting everything on where the wheel arch was to the middle of the hub, it ended up measuring about 560. Um, I hope that this helps a few of you guys out if you're wanting to install a lift kit. Like I said, this is my first time ever doing it and it was surprisingly a lot easier than what I thought. The fronts were a lot easier and quicker to do than the rears, but overall, now that I've done it and I know what all the steps are, I you know, feel a lot more confident doing it next time and I'd be able to do it a lot quicker. And I just want to say a big thank you to Pancho, I'll tag him below, but he sent me a couple messages and some pictures on how to install a lift kit before I did all this, so a lot of this was just directions that he'd given to me, so thank you so much for, you know, going out of your way and taking photos of why you were doing your lift kit, but give him a follow on Instagram and YouTube. But thank you for watching if you've made it this far and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content.